What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for lines.com, playpicks.com. Going to talk a little bit about the New York Giants football team and what they are looking at here from a betting perspective in 2020. As always, guys, do appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel. Everything we do here is absolutely free. So uh, click that button, subscribe. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up while you're here and let us know in the comments how you're betting this team and if there's anything else you'd like us to cover uh, about the New York Giants. As we get going here, you can see right here on the lines, we have a full betting guide if you want to see this in written form. Take a look right here. Got the schedule down here, some breakdowns of the odds and whatnot, spread total props, some even breakdowns a little bit further as to kind of their offseason moves and stuff like that, which we'll talk about a little bit here as well. Of course, this is the Joe Judge era New coaching staff, top to bottom here. Uh, head coach Joe Judge, Jason Garrett taking over the offensive coordinator position, and then Patrick Graham coming in at defensive coordinator. This team, the New York Giants, last year, according to Sharp Football, I mean, according to Pro Football Focus, 21st graded offense, 22nd graded defense. Not great, as you would imagine. They went in, they did some drafting. They drafted an offensive tackle with their fourth overall pick, Andrew Thomas out of Georgia. They drafted Xavier McKinney with their second round pick. Another offensive tackle in the third round, a cornerback in the fourth round. They signed a corner in James Bradbury, linebacker Blake Martinez. So you can see they know that the defense was really, really bad in Achilles' heel of this team. So they went after that in the draft. And they also knew, which we'll talk about a little bit later whenever we were talking, when we're talking about Daniel Jones, but the offensive line was a big problem as well. So they needed to do something about that. So they did that. Of course, as far as what they did in the offseason from a losses perspective here, they lost Eli Manning to retirement, of course. Uh, Antonio Hamilton's out of town. Cody Latimer's out of town. Mike Rimmer's out of town. Uh, Nate Solder on the offensive line actually opted out this season as well. So he will not be there for this team either. So take a look here at this schedule. What we're going to see here is three primetime games for this team. We're going to start things out here on Monday night here in week one. If you look down to week seven, they come in on Thursday night football here and then come in in week eight, right back on Monday night football versus Tom Brady and that Tampa Bay Bucks team. They enter this season, guys, with the fifth toughest schedule in all of the NFL, according to Sharp Football. It is really really brutal if you take a look at their schedule here to start things out nine of their first 10 games are against teams that are projected to have at least eight wins or at least expected to go 500 this season the only team the Redskins right here that is not projected to at least go 500 this year so I mean a brutal brutal schedule brutal start to the season gonna be real tough for this team that went four and 12 last year you know five and 11 in 2018 three and 13 in 2017 so it's going to be a rough rough stretch here they get to that bye week and at least they come out against the Bengals there and hopefully can regroup actually one of the few games that they are actually favored in as you can see uh right there so let's go ahead and take a look at this team as far as a win total perspective so if we look over at DraftKings and FanDuel so we will look at the Giants here at both of these coming in at six wins. So if you wanted to bet them over here, you'd want to bet the over at FanDuel because you can see it's only juiced to 115. If you wanted to bet the under, you would do that over here on DraftKings where you're actually getting plus 103 over here on that where uh, where you're uh, still having to lay over here on the under. You're actually getting plus money over here on DraftKings at the under six. Now over at FoxBet, they actually have the Giants at six and a half wins. So this is really just kind of how you want to go about this and how you feel about this team. If you want to lock in that push equity, if they happen to land exactly on six, then you're going to want to do that over at DraftKings or FanDuel. But if you have some sort of feeling that maybe this team is definitely going to win seven or eight games, you can head over here and actually take the over at plus 105 over here for the Giants. At, uh, at Fox Bet, again, they are six and a half as to where the other two books coming in here at six. Now, let's take a look at the well, uh, where you can find the championship. You go to championship winner odds right there. Come over here to DraftKings as well. Championship winner and then same thing here over on FanDuel. And we'll take a look at these odds here. 80 to one at all three books. So it doesn't really matter where you want to bet this team. You're getting 80 to one odds as you see right here on FanDuel. That is what you're going to get at DraftKings is what you're going to get at Fox Bet as well. They are in sync as well again 
over here on the uh, division as well. So if you, I mean, uh, on the conference. So if you think they're going to win the NFC, you are going to be getting 40 to one on the Giants at all three books as well uh, on the uh, conference bet. And if you want the division bet, same as well, um, pretty close at all, all the places, nine to one at both FanDuel and Fox bet, but you can get a little bit better odds if you come over here to DraftKings where you can take a look and you see you get 10 to one. So right there at uh, DraftKings, if you want to take the Giants to win the division. So 10 to one is your best spot over here at DraftKings. You can also bet these teams to make the playoffs a yes, no bet on that. What we're going to do is head over here to FanDuel if you want to take the yes. So the yes on the New York Giants over here going to be your best bet at plus 380 right here at FanDuel. If you want to bet the no, you want to come over here to Fox Bet where you can uh, take the... We take these team futures and NFC right here. You see to make the playoffs. We'll scroll down to the Giants and you can see the no is at minus 450. It is actually at 500 at DraftKings and 550 at FanDuel. So the no over here on Fox bet at minus 450. And the yes, if you wanted them, would be plus 380 over here on FanDuel. Now, if we take a look at kind of how this goes with the win totals, right? I mean, if you take a look, we go back over here and you look at this schedule and we talked about how brutal this is, uh, a brutal, brutal start for this team. The win total is only projected to be six, you know, sitting at six and six and a half at the books out there. If you have the type of bankroll, I lean pretty heavily to the no on them making the playoffs here. You get 450 there for the Giants, uh, minus 450. So you're going to lay 450 to win 100. But again, it depends on what kind of bankroll you have. They would have to bear, they had to really, really overperform to make the playoffs. And, uh, you know, 450 is a pretty good number considering you're paying 550 over at FanDuel and 500 over at DraftKings as well. Another way you can bet on this team is if you want to bet on the MVP. So we click over here on, we uh, click on player futures here, NFL player futures, regular season MVP. So this is where we talk about, you know, look, shopping, right? Here's why we shop. Here's why we have multiple accounts in these states that allows us to easily have multiple accounts. Again, go to the lines, click on your state. Whenever you get up here, U.S. Sports Betting, click on your state. All of the very best offers are going to pop up. Be sure and have that. I'm going to show you why right here. MVP over here on Fox Bet. Saquon Barkley, 40 to 1. You're like, oh, 40 to 1. 41 on MVP for Saquon Barkley. But we come over here, player futures over on, I mean, uh, awards, MVP, scroll down a little bit, Saquon Barkley, 60 to 1 over here on DraftKings. So again, 40 to 1 compared to 60 to 1 over on DraftKings. This is why we have multiple accounts. This is why we shop lines. And hopefully, maybe I'm pointing you in the right direction by watching this video. But again, 60 to 1 here at DraftKings where we're looking at 40 to 1 over at Fox Bet. So that's what we're going to do there. Now, from an MVP perspective, weirdly enough, we're going to head back to Fox Bet because you can see over here on DraftKings, Daniel Jones comes in at 66 to 1. He's 65 to 1 over on FanDuel, but over here on Fox Bet, 70 to 1. So 70 to 1, Daniel Jones to win the MVP if that is the route you guys want to take. Now we will come to uh, some of these player props that you can bet on the Giants heading into the season here. Uh, we'll start out with passing yards and Daniel Jones, regular season passing yards. We'll get off of these guys and come down to Daniel Jones. And the reason I'm coming to Fox bet is this is where you're going to want to take uh, the over. However, you can get the same price over at, uh, over at FanDuel as well. So if you did want to do that, you're getting the same price at Fox bet and at FanDuel player props come there, hit quarterback totals, scroll down a little bit and you'll see. So here we go. However, 37, nine and a half, but you see it's juiced to 112 over here on Fox bet only 110. So that's why we're going to take this number over here on Fox bet. If you want to bet the over, if you want to bet the under a whopping one yard difference over here, over on, over here on, DraftKings, but again, we'll take the extra yard, right? We're always going to try to make the best bet we can possibly make. 
And the best bet that we can possibly make is uh, is going to be taking that extra yard here. You can see 3,800 and a half as opposed to 3,799. So we'll take the under here for minus 110. So if you take a look at this, guys, 3,800 yards divided by 15 games. So let's just assume Daniel Jones misses one game and we're just doing this for safety, right? Because quarterback, football's hard. People get hurt, whatever it might be. Finger, knee, ankle, something like that. 3,800 divided by 15, 15 games, comes up to about 253 yards per game. Daniel Jones threw for 3,027 yards last year in 12 starts, which averages out to about 233 yards per game. That said, this guy was pressured on 41% of his dropbacks. That's the second most in all of the NFL. The line was absolutely atrocious. They went out, they addressed that in the draft at least, Went and got him two draft picks on that line right there. Uh, and you got the second year leap, right? I mean, the guy should be better in his second year. The only downside to this would be that he faces the 10th toughest projected pass defense schedule in all of the league. So you're going to be up against a bunch of killers when it comes to pass defenses, and especially here early in the season. Look at this, Pittsburgh, Chicago, San Francisco right off the bat. Three of the very toughest in all the league just to start the season right there. So um, for me, it's a no bet. I actually think that line is pretty much right on for Daniel Jones. I mean, you know, if we break that out and he does play all 16 games, of course that comes in at, at lower than that uh, than that 253 that we were talking about from a 15 game perspective. Uh, I think that all works out to about right here. So to pass for me, but if you do have a, a, a lean one way or the other, like I said, he threw for 3,027 last year in just 12 starts. So uh, you think that he takes a leap here in the second second year. The only problem is with Jason Garrett taking over to offensive coordinator, what are the opportunities going to be? I mean, Jason Garrett, I mean, if you guys were watching that Cowboys offense, which you probably were if you're a Giants fan, you saw a bunch of it. I mean, old school, archaic, they play slow, um, stuff like that. So uh, anyway, uh, it, stuff to kind of process here as you go about making your bets. Now, the other thing that we can do here is bet on uh, Daniel Jones touchdown passes. Now, it is at 26 and a half at FanDuel and Fox Bet. The under is at minus 128 over here at um, over here at FanDuel. So if you want to take the under on Daniel Jones passing touchdowns, you're going to come here uh, where it's like, oh, it's actually it's um, it's at 128 right here at under 26 and a half. Now, if you want to take the over on 26 and a half regular season passing touchdowns right there, we'll come down to Daniel Jones. You can take the over for actually plus 110 over here on Fox Bet. So if you think Daniel Jones is going to throw 27 plus, you are going to want to bet that over here on Fox Bet. Now, the other thing you can, the other option that you can take here, this is where the numbers differ just a little bit if you want to play it a little bit more safe. Passing touchdowns coming in at 25 and a half here on DraftKings, 110 on both sides. So if you wanted to play the over over here and you pay the juice as opposed to the 26 and a half over on Fox Bet, where you uh, actually are getting money, the plus 110 as opposed to the minus 110 that you're getting right here on DraftKings. Again, personal preference for you. If you take a look at this, Jones went for 24 passing touchdowns in just 12 starts last year. Now that said, you dig a little bit deeper and you see he had two games of four touchdown passes and one game of five touchdown passes. Seven of those 12 starts, he only had one touchdown pass in. So he had three monster games in the 12 starts and then seven were very, very average. So where do you think Daniel Jones lands this year? We already talked about the difficulty in schedule. Does he take that big second year leap here? What is going to be the health of his receiving core, which is where We'll be talking about here in just a second, which has not been very friendly to him uh, it, last year in his rookie season. So we can bet Saquon Barkley uh, rushing yards as well. One of the things you can do over here on DraftKings, I mean, on FanDuel, click on the running back total and you can actually see most regular season rushing yards. You can get Saquon Barkley at plus 950 over here on FanDuel if you think he is going to lead the league in rushing yards if we want just total rushing yards and the over under here rushing yards over under at DraftKings for Saquon Barkley coming in at 1200 
and a half. So if you want the over, you're going to bet Saquon Barkley over here at DraftKings. You're getting 1,200 and a half. Over on Fox Bet is where you would want to take the under if you're looking to bet the under. Regular season rushing totals here come down to Saquon Barkley, and you'll see 12, 15 and a half. So a 15-yard difference. Again, we're always going to try to bet the best number. We're always going to be taking the best number. So you'll take the under over here on Fox Bet as to where you're taking the over on DraftKings. Now let's go to receiving yards, guys, and talk about, you know, three different receivers here because three different guys are showing up on the, the totals here that we can take a look at. And I mean, these are these are all three viable guys in this offense that we need to take a look at. Let's start out with Sterling Shepard. And if we want to bet Sterling Shepard over here on Fox Bet, we're going to be taking the under. 815 and a half yards, we're going to take the under on Sterling Shepard and bet that at Fox Bet. If we wanted to bet the over, come up here, of course, receiving yards over under, come down to Sterling Shepard, and we're going to take the over over here on DraftKings. You can see 775 and a half. So we are getting a 40 yard difference between the two books. So if you want the over, you're going to bet that at DraftKings at 775 and a half. If you want the under, you're going to bet that at 815 and a half over here on Fox Bet. Now, Sterling Shepard played in 10 games last year, totaled 576 yards. He did play in all 16 games in 2018. He caught 66 balls for 872 yards, which you see would be way over the, uh, the 775 over here that we saw at DraftKings. He was hurt as well in 2017. However, we're talking about a guy with three concussions and has migraine issues already in his very short career. For me, this would be an underplay or a pass for me. Uh, under at 815 and a half or pass. All, you know, again, all things considered. Tough pass defense. Um, injury concerns here with Sterling Shepard, which is very, very real. And then also just the emergence of Darius Slayton in this offense as well. He is the next guy that we will examine. If we want to bet Darius Slayton in this offense, we are going to look here at the over on Fox bet, 674 and a half. A big, big difference here between these two books, the overs and unders, 750 and a half over here on DraftKings. So you would want to bet the under on DraftKings. If you are bearish on Darius Slayton, you're going to bet the over over here on Fox Bet at 674.5 if you wanted to go Darius Slayton there. And listen, guys, finished with 740 yards, only starting nine games last year. He played in 14 as a rookie, but only started nine, went for 740 yards, only had 84 targets, only caught 48 balls. At the end of the day here, you have to think he gets a second-year bump again. You think that Daniel Jones and him maybe have a little bit better uh, rapport throughout the course of the season here. And then also, when you just take a look at this, I mean, I hate to bet overs, right? I mean, I, I really do. I don't like betting overs in, in a lot of situations. And because when we look at these, you know, when we look at these teams, Injuries are always a big concern. We don't know a ton going in. What if the quarterback goes down? It, a lot a lot of the overs depend on a lot of different factors here for these receivers. But I think 674 is pretty low here for Darius Slayton when you consider the injury concerns for Sterling Shepard, the injury concerns for Golden Tate, and the age of Golden Tate. How about the injury concerns of Evan Ingram as well? So, I mean, I mean Darius Slayton could find himself as a huge, huge part of this offense here in a team that's going to be bad and should be down, which usually means increased passing volume and should be throwing the ball a whole lot more. If he sees 110 targets, he was able to get 740 yards on only 84 targets. You know, um, if he's able to get 110, 150, 120 targets, Darius Slayton, for me, I do lean towards the over. I almost like the over here for him. The last guy we'll talk about, Evan Ingram in this offense. Uh, Evan Ingram, if you wanted to take the over, we're going to do that at Fox Bet yet again. 674 and a half. Yes, that's the same number that they have listed for Darius Slayton. Then over here, Evan Ingram for uh, for DraftKings coming in at 700 and a half. So if you want to bet the under, you do that 700 and a half over here. Now, same thing with Evan Ingram as we were talking about Sterling Shepard. Been injury plagued his entire career. Coming off a list Frank injury that he suffered last year. Really, the question here is just 
health. You know, if he stays healthy, he should smash this over over here on Fox Bet at 674 and a half. He only played in eight games last year and went for 467. He averaged 58 yards per game. If you take that 58 yards per game, he'd only have to play in 12 games to get over this 674 and a half right here. That gets him to 696. So he would hit the over if he just played in 12 games and averaged what he averaged last year with a rookie quarterback, right? Uh, tight end coach Freddie Kitchens has been raving, ranting and raving about how much he likes Evan Ingram and how good he's been doing. But again, it's all about the health and injury concerns here with Evan Ingram, which makes this over bet so incredibly scary. That said, if he stays healthy, he should smash it. That's really the only concern I have there with that number on Evan Ingram. Finally here, guys, the way you, another way you can bet this uh, Giants team, if you head over to draft, if you head over to FanDuel here, they have a tab called Local Favorites. As you see on your screen, Local Favorites. Click on the Giants right there, and then they have interesting different ways that you can bet. The Giants, they actually have up all of their games that you can bet preseason right here, and then they also have the New York Giants. When will they get their first win? And the odds as to when they will get their first win. Now, obviously, if you're looking at this, and if you want to bet week one, you're never betting this number right here because as we see, you can get plus 164 just to bet the Giants against the Steelers here in just a week one line. So, you know, you're not going to bet the 150 here. But then we move over here. I mean, do you think they beat the Bears? Do you think they beat the Niners? Do you think they beat the Rams? What about the Cowboys at Dallas? Week six versus Washington almost seems like their first real chance at a win at plus 750 here. I mean, you were talking about in preseason lines here, they're three and a half point favorites. Do you want to bet the money line come come time? It's going to cost you somewhere around minus 180, maybe minus 200, depending on how bad Washington ends up being. So if you want to bet this preseason minus 184, if you think that that's their first real chance at a win, you get plus, one seven, plus 750 here um, under this little local favorites tab over here on FanDuel. So uh, maybe it's worth throwing a few bucks on and having a little bit of sweat on that. But I mean, when you look at this schedule, it is a monster to start out. And I really do believe that week six could be their first chance at a win. And taking that plus 750, uh, pretty appealing, pretty, pretty appealing. But guys, uh, hopefully this helps you out finding the best numbers, finding the best lines, finding the best ways to go about betting the least amount of juice to, uh, to go about and betting this New York Giants team. If you want to get involved. And again, we have this written breakdown over here on the lines as well. So be sure and do that. One last reminder, please go ahead and subscribe to the page. Give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments how you are betting New York Giants. And also, if there's anything else you'd like us to, uh, to cover here with this team. Good luck with all your bets.